Welcome to Math Made Easy. And in this video, we're going to look at the easiest ways to multiply. We're going to use diagonal lines going in opposite directions to represent numbers, and then count the number of times the lines meet to give us our answer. So for example, if we had tried to calculate two times three, we'd have two diagonal lines from the top left to bottom right, and three diagonal lines from the top right to bottom left and make them cross somewhere near the bottom. We then put a circle around where the lines meet. Every time the lines meet, that is a hit point. All we have to do then is count the hit points to get the correct answer. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Two times three equals six, and that is the correct answer. I've included a multiplication table so you can check your answers and refer back to later. Many people have found it useful to recite the relevant numbers table after each question, or at least up to the numbers they have been using. So for example, 1 times 3 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, etc, etc. Learning the multiplication tables will also help you with division. I found it best to create a box to work in with some dividing lines to separate our units, tens and hundreds. We'll use the previous example of two times three to show how we're going to lay it out. The next question is slightly harder. This time we're going to multiply five times four. So again, we're going to draw from the top left five diagonal lines, and from the top right, we're going to draw four diagonal lines. We'll draw a circle around where the lines meet, and then count our hit points. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. We have twenty hit points, and so as there are two digits, we'll put a zero in the units box and a two in the tens box. The answer for 5 times 4 is 20. We'll check with our table that we have the correct answer. And there we have. This one is slightly harder. We're going to multiply 12 times 3. So from the top left, we're going to draw one thick line to represent how many tens there are in 12 then two thinner lines to represent two units. Then from the top right, we will draw three thinner lines to represent the three units. We are going to draw a circle around the area where the thin lines meet thin lines to count our units. Then another circle around where the thin lines meet thick lines to count our tens. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. So we write 6 in the units box. We have 1, 2, 3 tens. So we write 3 in the tens box. We write 3 and 6, and 36 is the correct answer. We will check with our table to see that 12 times 3, or 3 times 12, are both 36. This one is again slightly harder, as we're going to multiply 13 by 12. So from the top left, we're going to draw one thick line to represent how many tens there are in 13, then three thinner lines to represent the three units. Then from the top right, one thick line to represent how many tens there are in 12, 
and two thinner lines to represent the two units. We're going to draw a circle around where the thin lines meet thin lines to count our units, where the thin lines meet thick lines to count our tens, and where thick lines meet thick lines to count our hundreds. We know the answer is going to be more than 100 as 10 times 10 is 100. So now we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 units. So we write 6 in the units box. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 tens. So we write 5 in the tens box. And we have 100. So we write 1 in our hundreds box. We write 1, 5, 6. And 1, 5, 6 is the correct answer. We'll check with our table and we'll see that 13 times 12 or 12 times 13 are 156. The higher the numbers, the more space you are likely to need to map it out properly so it doesn't become confusing which lines belong in which section. As this question is 13 times 14, we're going to draw it out at a slightly flatter angle. We're going to draw one thick line to represent how many tens there are in 13, then three thinner lines to represent the three units from the top left. Then one thick line to represent how many tens there are in 14, and four thinner lines to represent the four units from the top right. We're going to draw a circle around the area where the thin lines meet thin lines to count our units where thin lines meet thick lines to count our tens, and where thick lines meet thick lines to count our hundreds. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 units. So we write a 2 in the units box, and a 1 inside the tens box to remind us we have to add this in. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tens. So we write eight next to the tens box and we have 100. So we write one in the hundreds box. We have one, eight, two and 182 is the correct answer. Again, we'll check it with our table. So the next one we're going to have a look at is 100 times 30. Up to now we've been using thin lines to represent units and slightly thicker lines to represent the tens. Now we're going to bring an even thicker line in to represent the hundreds. So from the top left we're going to bring in one very thick line to represent the hundreds. There's no tens, so we're going to leave that area blank. And then two slightly thinner lines to represent the units. From the top right, we're going to bring in three thicker lines to represent the tens. We'll keep all our units, tens and hundreds. So looking at our diagram, we've got no thin lines meeting thick lines, so we've got no units. We do have thin lines meeting thicker lines. They're our tens, so we'll put a circle around those. We don't have any thick lines meeting thick lines, but we do have thick lines meeting a very thick line, and they're gonna be our thousands. So we've got no units we have one two three four five six tens so we'll write down six in our tens box we have no hundreds so we'll write a zero in our hundreds box and we have one two three thousands so we'll write three in our thousands box and at the top we've got a three zero six 
0. So the answer to 102 times 30 is 3060. And that is the correct answer. The only problem with this method is if we get two large units to multiply, such as 9 times 8 or 19 times 18, as we would have lots of dots to add up, which could be confusing and leave us open to a counting error. The easiest way of doing something like this is instead of calculating 9 times 8, we split this into three parts. Part 1 is where we round up from 9 times 8 to 10 times 8, so we can count in tens. Part 2 is where we work out the rounding up, and part 3 is where we subtract the rounding up. In part 1, we're going to make this 10 times 8, so we draw a thick line from the top left to represent a 10, and 8 thin lines to represent 8 units. We draw a circle around where the lines meet, and this will be how many tens we have. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we write 8 in our tens box, and 80 is the correct answer. Part 2 is the rounding up of 10 minus 9, which equals 1. So we multiply 1 times 8. So we'll bring in one thin line from the top left, and then 8 thin lines from the top right. We'll draw a circle around where the lines meet, and then we'll count up how many times the lines meet, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and write 8 in the units box. 8 is the right answer. Our original question was, what is 9 times 8? In part 1, we rounded it up to 10 times 8, and the answer was 80. In part 2, we worked out the rounding up, which is 1 times 8, which is 8. In part 3, we're going to subtract part 2 from part 1. So 80 minus 8 equals 72. And that is the correct answer. We'll check this in our multiplication table. And we'll see that 72 is the right answer. As we can see, it's probably easier to do this method than to try and count all of these dots. Using the same method, write down these questions and complete them in your own time. You can refer back to the examples and the tables to check your answers. Take advantage of our free subscription and subscribe to this channel for the latest Math Made Easy videos. Thank you all for watching and I hope this has helped.